1987, a groundbreaking survey was conducted in California by the California Network of Mental Health Clients to explore what factors promote or deter well-being of those commonly labeled as mentally ill. It was written, administered, and analyzed entirely by mental health clients. The following film reflects the findings of that survey. This film affirms our personhood in living meaningful and satisfying lives. In a world of stigma, poverty, loneliness, and injustice, our voices illuminate the value of self-help, creativity, meaningful work and activity, and basic human dignity and respect. Most importantly, we speak for ourselves. Normal people, and I want to say, as I said, I say all the time, some of my best friends are normal people. I don't want you to get the wrong idea. <laughs> Just because normal people started World War I, World War II, dropped the atomic bomb in Hiroshima and Nagasaki and committed genocide against the Native Americans, instituted slavery, I have nothing against normal people, but I want my daughter to marry one, you know what I'm saying? You know, like, normal's supposed to be good or sane, but what's so sane about a businessman in Sacramento wearing a three-piece suit when it's 105 degrees. It makes more sense to go naked. You know, I mean, like... It, I think comedians are normatized deviants. And I've said that when you're a wild and crazy guy out on the street, especially with radical politics, they put you in jail and mental hospitals. When you're a wild and crazy guy on stage, you're known as a comic genius. Okay. Banana split. For my baby, and a glass of water for me. It was while I was at UC Irvine, I got, I had a, what may commonly called a breakdown, getting really depressed even, but uh, some of it was an attempt to find some meaning in the world, and sometimes that meant that I was violating what I considered, you know, especially middle class rituals, and my family didn't know what to do. Well, they had a lot of concerns, even though I did not hurt anybody. 47% of us have avoided mental health treatment due to the fear of involuntary commitment. This fear may actually discourage us from seeking help, even when we feel in need of mental health assistance. My feelings about hospitalization are, are overwhelmingly negative. I found what is helpful is having meaningful work and activity, um, something that gives a purpose to life. And for me, it's been um, being involved in the patients' rights movement. As you know, you've been uh, certified up to 14 days mm -hmm. to be here, even if you don't want to be here. Um, however, I am talking to the therapist, and the therapist says that if you're willing to stay here, that there's a good possibility they would be willing to sign you in voluntarily. Mm -hmm. So the hearing is for uh, purposes if you want to contest that. Would you, so my basic question is, would you like to leave or would you like to stay in no, the I hospital? I'm staying until the doctor thinks I'm well enough to, you know. Okay, yeah. but you, you, they would probably want to keep you uh, for more than a couple of days. You're not going to think you're going to change your mind. And, no, I'm not going to. Okay, I mean, have you talked to Crystal? Who yes, briefly. It? And has she talked to you about being a voluntary, possibly? No, no. Okay, been. so I'll be, I'll be back. Thanks okay, a lot. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. We operate in the express interest of clients. We don't make clinical judgments. So if somebody wants to leave the hospital and that's their wish, we try to help them. But if they want to stay in the hospital and the doctor says no, we try to help them stay in the hospital. We try to, to operate in their corner. Do you feel like you, you're knowingly consenting to treatment yeah. and feel satisfied yeah. about yeah. about the pros and cons yeah. and all that. Yeah. Okay. Clients do have ideas about what they need. And even when somebody is in a lot of distress is that they can they have fundamental knowledge about their own condition. And many times they're not listened to. 52% of us have been discriminated against because of psychiatric labeling. This stigma creates a very real impact on the quality of our lives and our families. We feel lonely or isolated from other people. Just like any oppressed group, 
uh, stigmatized group in our society that are powerless, whether it's been blacks or women or Chicanos, they're the ones that are more victimized. And yet the dominant ideology is always was showing that black man does this, never white man does this. And it's the same thing with ex-mental patients. We're not any more dangerous. In fact, most days have shown we're less dangerous. Mental patients are unpredictable, and how do you know they're unpredictable? You know, I say, how do you know John's unpredictable? And they say, well, I know he's un John's unpredictable because I see him do it all the time. I say, well, isn't that a contradiction in terms? So we're dealing with a lot of uh, double standards. And when people think about meaningful work, and what they'd like to see so-called mental patients do, what is it? It's uh, like being a security guard at a toxic waste dump, you know, <laughs> you know around the Alaskan border. Uh, we would love to influence you to be more interested in some of our goals, which are well, not your concern. Well, like, what, what do you think are not? Your I don't think concern. you're particularly concerned that there be more acute hospital care. No, well, if in you, Italy, if, they're if, shutting if, down the hospitals. If you can suggest how you deal with a person who's dangerous to self or dangerous to others, well, or what we consider to be gravely disabled in a totally free and independent living situation, I would ha be I can, happy to listen well, to it, but I don't see it. Since I was hospitalized 20 times, a lot of people would have said that I am a hopeless, mentally ill person. And it was because of the self-help and the fight for rights that made my life different. I was I considered still, to be mentally ill for a long period of time, severely how, how mentally ill. Howie, Howie, you're, 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 you're assuming that there is only black and white, and I'm saying that I still say you're the one that's assuming. That. No, no. You, I say that the majority, that you, the majority of the people that we're talking about, are unfortunately still too ill to be able to benefit. They can't communicate too well. They can't socialize too well. You no, know, there's and so many people in our self-help group that that fit that description, but are doing real well. Clients deserve the same basic rights as any other human being, and we always have rights, and that our human rights should not end where our psychiatric diagnosis begins. Yeah.